giving God thanks. And if we can, and if I will, I, I could give you a subtopic. Four reasons why God deserves praise. Four reasons why God deserves all your praise. Gratuitous extolment or the word praise. It speaks to one's expression of admiration. Another word is called plaudit. And the word plaudit is talking about an enthusiastic approval. I enthusiastically approve of something or someone or a situation when I gratuitously extol its virtue. When I simply praise it. In this context, I'm talking about something that deserve it or is merited. It's a merited cause because it has found favorable, favorable judgment in my sight. And say what you want, but you cannot force me to approve of anything. You can tell me all you want about a thing, but I, until I come to the gratuitous extolment of that thing, I will not praise it. If I don't find merit in it, I will not praise it. And when we're talking about God, and I don't know about your experiences with God, but I can only speak from my experiences that my encounter, my salvation from my circumstances, my situations, my trials, ah, the pits and my downfall, him that loved me and cared for me and pulled me out of it and put his arm around me and called me blessed when I knew I wasn't blessed. Amen. He deserved the gratuitous extolment of my praise. Amen. Well, I want to talk to you in this place today. Uh, David, amen to God. In 2 Samuel 22, he cried, the Bible said, with jubilation as he ran from Saul. He ran away from Saul who did not care about David, who hated David because God said of David that he, David, has found favor in his sight. He took David from a shepherd boy and uh, anointed him to be something great. Uh, Sometimes I see myself in this capacity as pastor and I scratch my head. And I said, how did I get here? Who said I should be here? But I looked to the love of God and I said, God, you called me something that I did not deserve. You called me blessed when I wasn't blessed. You called me righteous when I know I wasn't righteous. Amen to God. And David, amen to God, when he realized that even though Saul pursued him, that every time Saul had him cornered, he found a way to escape. David said it could not be of my own volition nor my own skill because sometimes we really think we're skillful but David said no matter how skillful or swift or brisk I am I could not escape this great king called Saul David said it had to be Jesus yeah. oh well yeah, you think if Jesus wasn't there he was there amen he has always been there from before the foundation of the world it was Jesus and David said the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. Oh, tell somebody, God is my deliverer. My deliverer is at the God of my rock in him. When I trust, he is my shield and the horn. That word horn speaks to strength. The horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. God, David, looked into it and said, it could not be me. It had to be God. As opposed to keeping it to himself, 
stuff, but sometimes we like keeping it to ourselves. David exposed the great virtue of the great deliverer. He said, God, you, God, you are my rock, oh God. A rock in a weary place. A rock in a tough situation. A rock in the wilderness. A rock came out the water. A rock the church is built on. Upon this rock, I built my church and the gates of hell can never prevail. David said, you are my rock. Hey, oh, my son. oh God, I thank you, Jesus. I can agree with David. For though the enemy comes upon me like a flood, I believe in whom delivered me from the mire. I called him my rock. Go ahead. Oh God. When one praises God, such a one is being thankful yeah. for being allotted something that they know they should not be receiving. Oh God. Go ahead. Oh God, I wish somebody hear me. Uh, this wasn't Henry's concoction as Brother Ryan. As we drove along, oh God. I drove along and I, this morning we called the men of God and when we call them, one said, listen, I've got an inspiration. I said, what's your inspiration? He said, oh, the Lord told me this morning about gratuitous exposure. I said, Brother Ryan, not Brother Ryan. I said, did you hear that? It's not Henry's word, Brother Ryan. It's a word from God. Then the other brother said, listen, I got another word from God. Psalms 65. He's my witness. Ah, they came with the psalm that God gave me and came with the word that God gave me. And I did not tell them. But they came to confirm a word that you need to hear this morning. That you better give God a praise. You better lift up the name of Jesus. For he is your rock. Oh, Jesus. Oh, help me now. Yes, when I praise him, I know I should not be receiving it. And I know this based on my own actions. Uh, that which is being presented, but that which God has given, it should not be offered. It should not be given to me. As a matter of fact, I look at it. Hallelujah to God. When God was offering it to me, the evangelist, when he offered it to me, I had to look around it to see if he was really offering it to me. <laughs> oh, God of mercy. When God said, here, Andrew, you're the one I've chosen, I looked around because I know Andrew. I know what's in Andrew. And I know that Andrew doesn't deserve it. So when God said of Andrew, Andrew, I called you Yes. Oh God, I have to look around, Sister Monica, and wonder what is going on with God. Why would God choose me? Why would God select me out of the crowd? So what do I do? In turn, I said, thank you. I don't deserve it. Somebody said, unmerited favor. Somebody said, unmerited favor. I did not deserve it. But he said, I am blessed. And he said, not only am I blessed, you can call me father. Hey, daddy. Yes, daddy. And I said, my daddy, he is my rock. Oh, help me, Jesus. The Bible in itself tells us at times about people, oh God, who were chosen, who were picked out, who were blessed. The Bible talked about ten lepers, oh Jesus. Ten lepers who came up to Jesus, and when they walked up to Jesus, they said, Lord, you know of a leper, a leper could not be among That's the nation right. because when leprosy struck, you were instructed to live on the side and to live in obscurity, to live away from the general public. And when you saw, and when you were walking, if you saw people walking, you had to scream out, leper, leper, leper. Like it unto AIDS today. If people had AIDS, what if they told somebody with AIDS, whenever you're walking down the street, if you see people cry out, AIDS, AIDS, AIDS. Well, that's what the instruction was for everyone that was stricken with leprosy. But these ten lepers, Lord God, heard about this rock. 
heard about this Jesus. The Bible said they, they approached him. God. They did not cry out leper, but they said, Jesus, thou son of David, why don't you have mercy on us? What do you want from me? Heal us of our leprosy. God, we don't deserve it, but heal us. He said, be thou healed. Go now, show yourself to the priest and do what is right. God, the Bible said they took off running. Have you ever been healed? Have you ever been touched? Have you ever been delivered? Has something God ever delivered something for you? Something that you thought couldn't be possible? Has God ever do it for you? Well, these lepers were touched. They were healed. The Bible said they ran away, ran to their respective abode. But the Bible said only one came back. Only one came back. And the Bible said it wasn't a Christian. Oh, Jesus. It was not a Christian. It was a, what's called a Gentile, a sinner, an outcast. But that sinner, that outcast, and I'm talking to people who are not in the church today. I don't want you to feel like you're thrown out. I don't want you to feel like God don't know you. But God expects something from you. You might not be in the church, but God still expects you to say that. He still expects you to say, thank you, Jesus. He still expects you to say, thank you for what you have done. One came back and he was he was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. But he came back to say thanks. Not somebody so you better open your mouth and say thanks. Sit here like you drank lemon juice. Say thank you. God. He's here now. Oh God, I'm going to talk to this. That I begin to understand that my walk with God does not begin with rules or theological mandates. God help me now. Rather, it is hallelujah, initiated and established upon relationship. God, when I came to the church, I didn't come to get your rules. I came for a relationship with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I came to get a relationship. Don't ask me to shack up with you and to jointly share my life with you before you first establish a relationship with me. Don't ask me to follow rules until I know Jesus for myself. Stop putting heavy rules on people. share myself with you unless you marry me. I can't give you brother Ryan what I have unless there is a relationship. We spend more time trying to conform to church than to establish a relationship with God. Oh, I'm just talking as the Holy Ghost led me. I don't need your amen anyway, Stephen. Glory be to God. Before Adam knew the rules of the tree of knowledge and good of evil and the tree of life, he knew the God that made him in his own image after his likeness. It's about relationship, not about rules. No. God, I want to strengthen somebody in this place. I'm feeling it now. Before God begins to extol or exhort me, God, he first must edify me. God can't just drop rules on me like that. He has to come close to me. And he got to sing just a closer walk with thee. And I got to say, granted Jesus is my plea daily. Walking close to thee. Let it be. Let all let it be. I know what you want when I'm intimate with you. Oh, oh God. I'm going to talk as the Lord leads. I can't follow your rules unless we have been walking together for two can't walk unless they agree I've got to walk with you and talk with you and lay down with you and rise up with you and drink with you and eat with you and know you you got to know me before you start laying rules on me God is looking for relationship oh 
Keep your amen in it. Oh my God. Wow, that I may know you. Paul cried out. If you think it was me, it wasn't me alone. And all the men and women of God, they were all looking for a relationship. Oh, that I may know you, God. I don't want to follow your rules unless I get to know you. Moses said, God is more than enough for me to lead your people. I want to know you. Show me your clothes. Take off the dress. Lord Jesus, here comes the final line. Take it off, God. Show me what's behind the veil. Get me up close and personal, Lord. I want to know your father. Lord Jesus. Oh God, the devil won't make me dizzy today. I'm going to praise God even in my dizziness. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in He is my rock. Well, it is important then for us to understand this because it is with this knowledge of relationship, that word knowledge speaks about kenosis, that receptiveness. With this knowledge that I begin to truly acquiesce or to accept God, I begin to understand the profundity of being in relationship with God. I start understanding God. When I realize that it's not about rules, but about relationship, God, help me, Jesus. Oh, God, I see my own wife. Lord of mercy. It's not about the fact that I pay bills or that I got a job with my wife. It's more than a job and more than a bills. It's more than the house and regulation. It's not about that, Sister Nicole, congregation. It's about a relationship. I've got to walk with her. I've got to hold her hands. I've got to comfort her in time. I've got to know when she's not feeling right just by her look. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you know when somebody just by her look. Oh, she's not feeling it. I've got to know her disposition. I've got to know how she... I've got to know how she's going i got to know every face, every action. I've got to know what she's trying to say. And I can react based on those emotional expressions. Hallelujah, this is Natasha. I can't just put rules on my wife. Don't go out, don't do this. Don't do. Who do I think I am? I've got to have something that's more profound. I've got to have a relationship. Likewise with God. God, you can't put rules on me until you introduce yourself to me. Until you give me your Holy Ghost. I need something from your God. I need your God. Every hour, every minute, I need you. In the morning and noon, I need you. And I need you to be Jesus. Oh God. Some of us don't know any relationship because we don't want a man. You're not in Bible study, so you don't understand. Lord of mercy. I want to tell you that you gotta have a man. You can't be this single 29th century. Lord Jesus. Woman of man. I don't need a partner. Lying spirit. You need a man. You need Jesus. And you homophobes, I'm not, I need a man, I need Jesus. I just want some man to hold on to my hand, Lord God. Can I talk to you? I don't want some man to just hold on to my hand to say he's in religion. No, no, no. I've got to know you before you hold on to me, Lord Jesus. Where is the ring on my finger? Where is the Holy Ghost? You thought, you thought you came to hear something else. But I came to tell you that this man Jesus is my rock. He's my savior. He's my fortune. He's my God. In him do I put my trust. Oh God. I'm not going to talk to you by now. And by virtue of coming into relationship with God, I am no more on the bondage, that bondage of fear and intimidation. 
Yes, Lord. But when I came to the church, amen to God, you told me that I'm going straight down to hell. And that God wants to destroy me, Lord Jesus. But I want to move to the next level. I want to move to the next level. Ah, when I move to the next level, Sister Nicole, I realize that God is not trying to kill me. God is trying to have a relationship with me. God. So I came in under bondage and intimidation. But Sister Sonia, it took God to take me to the next level for me to truly understand understand who God is and what God requires of my life. He didn't want to beat me down and send me to hell, but he wants to lift me up, wash me, cleanse me, sanctify, put a new robe on me, and call me blessed. He wants to marry me. He said, you are my bride. He called me the bride of Christ. He doesn't want to kill me. He wants to marry me. Lord of mercy, you stiff. You better open your mouth and give God of praise. I am the bride of Christ. I am the son of God. You might not like me, but I'm still son of God. I might not have a relationship with you, but I've got a relationship with Jesus. Oh God. So here now, God. God, the apostle Paul now, he picked it up. Yes, Lord. He grabbed it. He picked it up. He understood this level that I've gone. It showed me. He picked it up. God, have mercy on my soul. And he explored. And he explored it. And then he implored me in his explorations. And he said, listen. I want to tell you something about your God. He said, I want you to rejoice in the Lord. Always. I don't want you to feel in bondage. I want to speak to somebody who has not yet taken on the name of Jesus. I want you to rejoice in the Lord always. I want you to say, Lord, I'm not here yet, but I'm on the way. I want you to get up and give God thanks. I'm not at the place yet, but I'm on the way. There might be 10 days ago, but I am on the way. I'm still going to give you thanks. I'm not here yet, but I'm going to glorify you. Hey, hallelujah to Jesus. Paul said, now rejoice. I'm coming against a redeemer of darkness. I don't want to hinder fight me today. The blood of Jesus Christ. Help me now. Yes, Lord. The TDJ lose them one way. But I'm going to lose them another way. I'm going to lose them for praise. I'm going to lose them to give you thanks. I'm going to lose them to you. I'm not looking for your money. I've got Jesus. I'm not looking for your friendship. I've got Jesus. I'm not looking for companion. I have the rock. Yes, Lord. Yes. He's a rejoice in the Lord. Always. And with emphasis, he declared. And again, I say, rejoice. There is an emphasis. There's a push, Sister Nicole. There's an exclamation, Sister Nicole. Don't just say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. There has to be an oomph in your praise. Let me know. Brother Ryan, oh, he's driving to me. He said, I told him I might be kind of strange because I'm within myself all the time. He might be talking to me, but then I'm disappearing because I'm in myself. He said, where are you, man? I said, I'm just talking to Jesus. I've got to talk to Jesus all the time. But when men fail me, I've still got to have my love. When people walk away, I still got to have Jesus. When I fail me, I still got to have Jesus. Can I move? Paul said, rejoice. I 
said, thank you, Paul. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Lord, why am I rejoicing? I'm rejoicing because I've come to the realization that God isn't trying to kill me. That's why I'm rejoicing. Because all these years I thought God was trying to kill me. But he was trying to find me. Oh, help me, Jesus. He was trying to find you. He was searching for you. Adam, where are you? Oh, God. He wasn't trying to kill Adam. He was trying to find Adam. The problem is, we are hiding behind the bushes. Oh, God. Oh, help me, Jesus. We're hiding behind the stuff. Adam, God. Adam, where are thou, God? He said, Lord, I did hear your voice, but I was afraid. Why were you afraid? Did somebody tell you I'm a bully? Don't you know I'm your lover? Don't you know I love you? Don't you know I care about you? Who told you I'm trying to kill you? Lord of mercy. I found out what Paul was saying. Hallelujah. Sin had me shrouded. A shroud of secrecy and sin locked me up. And I thought God was looking for me to kill me, brother Ezra. Lord of mercy. I thought sin, God was looking for me to annihilate me. But I've come to realize that he's trying to find me not to kill me he wants to bless me he wants to change my name and he's offering his hand in marriage when he found me I was shaking and he said do you want to marry me I said Lord Jesus I don't deserve it but yet I am blessed Oh, help me now, Jesus. To every demon of darkness. Shakosa. Blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I am a warrior of God. And I'm not afraid of any demon of darkness. The blood of Jesus. Hello, Shanda. Your kind spirit. He knew me. God. God, yet he blessed me. He knew who I was. Yet he married me and he gave me his name. Lord, Lord, help me now. When you see me walking, stop calling me Andrew. I've got the name of my of my lover. I put on his name in marriage. You call it baptism, I call it marriage. When you see me, I've got the name of him who loves me. I bear the Jesus! Oh God, somebody give God thanks. Open your mouth and give God thanks. He's looking for you. He's searching for you. You're under a rock. You're under the bush. You've been hiding for too long. God said, I know your face. I made you in my own image after my own likeness. You've been trying to hide, but I know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Can we go on? Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. I don't want anybody to scare me with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I don't want anybody to scare me yeah. with God. Yeah. Don't use hell to intimidate me. Yeah. God is not trying to send me to hell. Yeah. His intention, yeah. his desire yeah. is that no man perish. Yeah. Stop telling me yeah. that I'm going to hell. Yeah. But tell me that God loves me. Yeah. And I want to tell somebody in this congregation. You heard it the wrong way. But God told me to reverse the curse. Turn it around. Turn it around in your favor. God is not trying to kill you. He's trying to save you. God. Hallelujah. Can I say that again? God is not trying to kill you. He's trying to marry you. Oh, 
watch this. Listen, listen. God, listen to the apostle, because I gotta lean on the apostle. For he, God, gave the word. I follow him as he follows Christ. He said, be careful now for nothing. In other words, don't be anxious with self-centered counterproductive worries and what people have to say about you. Don't get caught up in it. Rather, in everything, by prayer, somebody say prayer. Don't get caught up in people's words. Don't get caught up in people saying. People never have anything good to say anyways. They always have something negative to tell you. Lord, mercy. But I got a God who always has something good to tell me. Don't get caught up in negative and counterproductive worries. But get on your knees and start talking to him who wants to talk to you. By prayer, somebody say prayer. I need to pray. No prayer, no power. I need the power. I need the relationship. So I need to pray. Prayer connects me to God. I can't connect to God by osmosis. Nothing like that. That's a foolish man's desire. But I've got to have a prayer life. I've got to talk to God. I've got to tell God who I am. Even though he already knows me. God, here I am. Not worthy of this vocation. Not worthy of a relationship. I've got to pray my way through. And while you're praying, the devil was trying to stop your prayer. Lord, this place. I feel the, the power of God. The devil is trying to stop me. He hinders my prayer. Tell me I'm no good. Tell me I'm nothing but a sinner. Tell me that our God is not going to hear my prayer. For what I did last night, oh Jesus. Oh Lord, God help us in this place. God, what I did last week, what I did last year. But I want to tell you, if you woke up this morning, new mercies you receive. If you woke up this morning, God is giving you another chance to reconcile. God is giving you another hope. A hope that make it not a shame. He's giving you another chance to say, yeah, Lord. I know I messed up, but God, have mercy. Lord, oh, when I speak to the people, hallelujah. A lot of naysayers in the house of God always got something negative to say. Your dress is not wiping the floor. God, you don't look the part. But I'd rather not look the part, but have a relationship with God. That can look the part and don't have a relationship with God. Now, hold on now. I'm not saying there are not rules. Wrong in this place. God calls you out, but He doesn't keep you in that situation. He wants to do it Himself. He doesn't want the big mouth people in the house to tell you, tell you how to do it. He wants to dress you Himself. I don't know about anybody, but I like buying things for my wife. Oh, Gilman. Oh, God. Yeah, brother, you gotta learn some of this. I like going in the store and saying, Lord, oh my God, my wife will look nice in this. Mm. Every husband gotta listen. You walk in and say, Boy, I'm gonna have the money, but God, this is gonna look nice on my wife. So, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save some of that money. I'm gonna put something, God, talk to me. Thank you, Jesus. I wanna bless him, but I'm gonna hold off a little. Oh, God, let him come up a bit more. God! Yes, Lord. I want to dress. I want to put. I want to. You look beautiful, honey. In this robe, in this garment, in this dress. Ah, this hat look nice on you. You look. You. I want to draw, Lord. I know she has taste, but I said I want to. It feels good to me when I dress you. God wants to dress you for Himself. Hallelujah. Oh God. Yes, Lord. Oh, help me now. Yes, Lord. And everything I had to say that. How in prayer and supplication. The word supplication means to ask for earnestly and humbly. You gotta ask for it earnestly and humbly. God wants you to come before God, hungry for something. And that seek shall find. Then that knock, the door shall be opened unto them. 
God wants you to seek him with an earnest heart, a thankful heart. There's nothing worse than having a spouse, a lover, who has no appreciation for you. You have done your best for this love. And all you get is a slap in your face. God is looking for somebody, Lord. Say, me, Lord. I remember you when the come with Lord. Somebody who can say, Lord, I need it, but God, I'll wait on you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I need it, but I might not get it right now. But I said, God, on your time, your will, your purpose, your desire, whatever you want from me, God, here I am. God bless me. Yes, Lord, I will move. Yes, with earnestly and humbly. God and with thanksgiving. Somebody say thanksgiving. That means blessing God. How ah, we have a saying now. Oh, Jamaica, bless up, Lord. Maybe I'm old in it. Bless up. I'm not blessing you up. I'm blessing God. Ah, bless God. I will bless the Lord. His praise. I say, how do you? But I bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Because He deserves the praise, the glory, and the blessing. Lord, help me in this place. Paul said, now we should not let our request be made known, but we should let our request be known unto him who loves us. God, don't be afraid to tell God about your situation. We have some foolish, prideful, proud people. Say they don't ask God for nothing. Thou fool and slow of heart to believe the gospel. God is rich, not in your Bentley and your Benz and your big house, but he's rich in blessing, he's rich in love, he wants somebody to dare to ask for it, he said you don't receive it because you didn't ask for it, you gotta open your mouth and ask God for it, God I need you, I need your close, I need your mind, I need your cognizant, I need the anointing to follow me, I need you to pull me out of my situation. You gotta ask God. He said, make your request known unto God. Watch this. And when you would have done that, he said, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall or shall mean it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If you go to God, Sister Nicole, you petition God with a humble spirit. I dare to tell you that it's going to happen. Be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. You ask him with a humble heart. He said, the peace of God. You ask anybody what they want in the world? They want peace. But he said, the peace of God. That passes all understanding. All you naysayers, I got a word for you. You don't understand God. You don't understand the mind of God. He said, if I ask him, he said, the peace that passes all understanding. That means the people who cannot comprehend God. You don't understand why I'm blessed. You don't understand why I'm delivered. You don't understand what God is doing in my life. Because it's a peace that I have. That the world can do. And the world can take away. You can get it when you come to this building. Only God can give it to you. Amen. Oh, God. Ah, Paul said, he said, if you ask for the humble spirit, if you give God thanks, if you supplicate, if you bless up God, if you lift up the name of Jesus, He said He's gonna put something in you. Hallelujah! That when wars come in your house, you've got peace. When trials come in your life, you've got peace. When your boss is acting upon the child, you've got peace. When your children are out of control, you've got peace. When there's Wars and rumors of war, you've got peace. With trouble, the devil's trying to tempt you, you've got peace. For it's the peace that passes. Oh! Somebody bless the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. I want peace. Tell somebody, tell somebody, I want peace. Tell somebody, I want peace. 
I feel, uh, I feel uh, this mountain top praise. Uh, good Lord, uh, we were up in the mountains today uh, as we drove home uh, and we were looking at the beauty of the mountain. Uh, but Ryan and I uh, looking at the mist uh, upon the mountain. The first the Adirondack Mountain. I say hallelujah. Glory be to God. I've got a mountain top praise. Lord of mercy. When I see you with my mountain top dance. Don't get jealous. Hallelujah. You might be miserable, but I've got try. It's a mountain top praise. A mountain top praise. A mountain top dance. I've got a mountain top boogie loogie in my spirit. I've got a mountain top praise. I'm not carnal, I'm spiritual. David danced like a madman. He danced. And just like you, you didn't understand that. Dead, oh Lord, let me pull this jacket off in this place. Don't let me start opening. He died. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he praised God. Uh, uh, he praised God. Uh, he prayed. Uh, he worshiped God. Uh, he gave God thanks uh, with a mountain top praise. Uh, You're too kind not to understand this. Uh, you gotta praise God until uh, you lose your shot. Uh, you lose your shirt. Uh, you lose everything and you gotta praise Him. Uh, Lord, uh, Lord, you want me to take it off? Uh, you gotta praise God! You gotta praise Him! Glory! 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 Uh, uh, are you kind of nice? You can't grasp this blessing. That's why I'm blessing you not. Because I don't care about clothes. I don't care about riches. I want a relationship! Glory! Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. I will bless the Lord. Have all time. His praise shall be continually in my mind. I want to tell you, I'm not dancing because of my situation, but I'm dancing because of the revelation that I have from God. You might dance because of your situation, but I dance because I Revelation. I know what God said. I believe what God said. Every word that issue out of his mouth. I believe it. You only dance when you think good is upon you. And I'm not going to be dance for that. I dance when bad is upon me. Mama got cancer. And I'm still praising God. Hallelujah. I'm not hanging my heart. Oh God, I'm not going to for me. Mom got diagnosed with cancer. God it hit me the first night. I said, mm. when I put my head down, God kicked it up. Oh God, why are you hanging your harps on the wheel? Why are you hanging your head like somebody without a hope? Hallelujah. Say yes, Lord. I can't cry over that. A weeping may endure for night. But I know my joy is coming in the morning. Lift up your head, oh EKs. I be lifted up the everlasting door. Mama's cancer can't stop us. Mama's still praising. And if she can praise, how about me? She done praise because of her situation. She's praising because of her revelation. Can I preach on? Yeah, Lord. Thank your kind spirit. It's by revelation I praise God. Ah, Lord. Ah. You see, my revelation comes. It's a derivative of my faith. I got so much to tell you. Lord, I don't know if I can finish this today. But my revelation that I have that extols God, that make God falls into the gratuitous extolment that praise. It comes from faith. My faith now is my substance. It's my hope. It's my eloquence of the things I can't realize, I can't see, I can't understand. How can a healthy woman, God, be stricken with cancer? I don't understand it. And I don't 
don't try to understand it. I just praise God in it. God. Because my faith says now that faith is a substance, God. It becomes something that I'm lacking, I'm needing. I'm weak. Faith becomes my strength. Yes. God. In my time of trouble, it becomes my deliverer. It's that elocost, it's that thing that I'm dependent on. My faith without faith, it is impossible to please God. If I don't have faith, God can't hear my prayer. And so I lean on my faith. And because I'm leaning on my faith, I'm able to see beyond my situation. That's why I don't praise God in situation. Right. Lord, now this is too deep for your mind. I don't praise him in situation. I only praise in situation when I have no faith. But with faith now, I'm able to look, Brother Cliff, beyond my situation. My situation does not dictate what I do. But my faith determines the level of confidence, my joy, my peace, my hope. My faith predicates or determines how high I go. Without faith, I'll be stuck in the situation. Today I'm happy, tomorrow I'm sad. Today I'm up, tomorrow I'm down. But because of the faith, because of my faith, I'm able now to see the mountain in the way and say to the mountain, be thou removed into the sea. You can't see it, but I can. Because my faith says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not talking to people with faith. I'm talking to situational people. But I want to pull you out of your situation and bring you up into faith. Take you from situation and bring you to revelation. Because it's by revelation you're able to face your Goliath. Can I preach on? Lord, help me now. But right, I'm too inspired. God, I can't shut it. It's by revelation now. I'm able to see Goliath seven feet tall see my problem a big long sword see the Philistine see Satan and all his emissaries coming against my house can I tell you this my house has been under attack I'm not talking about it but the Henry's has been under attack because of the anointing that God has placed in our lives the devil has been trying to tear us down limb for limb but I've got a word for the devil we're not going to die uh, we're not going to give up uh, and I'm not going to quit uh, but I'm going to praise God uh, not because of how I feel today uh, but because uh, of my revelation uh, God said you will never leave me nor forsake Lord of mercy I'm not afraid we tell the devil we bow together as a family and tell the come the devil do what you may try if you can you might take what you can't take all we're too anointed to take us we're too anointed to take us all out we're gonna fight until we die we'll never run away but we're on the battlefield oh God speaking to you by situation, I'm speaking to you by revelation. God, I've got to slow it down. Help me now, God. Yeah, God. So David cried, God, praise awaited for thee. Oh God, inside God, silent, glorious embodiment of God. Oh, silent. God, some of us come to Zion and hop now and play with a fool in Zion. We bring our proud behavior to Zion. We bring our wanton behavior to Zion. But when David talks about Zion, he talks about Zion with great exuberance and joy, with great love. He speaks of it as a special place. He speaks of it as a holy place. Oh God. It's a place where God meets man. He speaks of it as a meeting ground. He speaks of it as a place of sanctification. He speaks of it as a place where men come and are washed. Men come and are cleansed. He speaks of it where the Holy 
Ghost is sent. He speaks of Zion as a great place. He said, praise God every morning. I'm going to wake up and praise God. Zion is not this building. Zion is in me, oh God. Oh Lord. Zion is in me. It's inside of me. It's the Holy Ghost inside. Zion, when I wake up, God, praise, wait for thee. Oh God. Every morning I wake up, I want to praise God. How oh, you came only for Thanksgiving, but I want to tell you, don't leave only thanking on this day. But thank God on every day. Wake up praising God. Hallelujah. When I wake up in the morning, and when I lay my head to rest, I bless the name of Jesus. Help me, Father. Help me, Jesus. Praise wait for thee, O God, in Zion. And unto thee shall my vow be performed. You made a vow to serve God, but you've been hobnobbing. God, you made a vow. And I gotta talk to some people because they keep stepping in and stepping out. God, God says it's not about the rules. It's about relationship. You can't step in my life and step out of my life. When you want to, you gotta make a commitment. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. In the 21st century, commitment is out the door. We've kicked it out. We don't make commitments anymore. We want to do what we want to do, when we want to do to get pleasure. But the devil and your pleasure is a lie. I want to talk to you from the Holy Ghost's mouth. He's looking for commitment. You can't be in today and be out tomorrow. You got to make up your mind. Make up your mind to serve the Lord. You gotta make up your mind to walk with God. You gotta make up your mind to say, for him I live and for him I die. You gotta make up your mind to get a close relationship with God. Too much, I'm not in. Selfish. You wanna show God how you think God should serve. Oh God, oh he's talking to me, I'm on in the deep, oh God, I want to tell you something, you don't determine life, he does, you're not the provider, he is, oh God, I've spoken, I've spoken your word, in other words, this thanksgiving and affinity that I have for you, God, is a derivative of the knowledge of what you have done for me. Oh, God, the vow that I'm going to keep with you, God, is a derivative of the knowledge that I have. Is the fact that you reveal yourself to me, and now I'm going to make a vow. Oh, when you make a vow, keep your vow. Don't make vows if you can't keep it. Lord, help me. For God said it's rather you not make a vow than to make a vow and not keep it. Can I talk to you for a minute? You want help, you gotta make a vow. But if you make the vow, you gotta keep the vow. It's common in a relationship. God is not asking more than any other relationship. You make a vow in a relationship, you're gonna stay with your wife, you're gonna stay with your husband. Stay in it! Amen. Jesus. When you make a vow, keep it! Go ahead. Amen. Oh Lord, help me. Holy quietness. Ah, but I thank God that you gave me the word. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, the Spirit. Can I talk for a minute? Paul in Romans 12 expostulated. He expostulated my thanksgiving. And he did it profoundly when he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy. Uh, acceptable, uh, 
which is your reasonable service. Can I hurry? Digress for a minute. He said, now, I beseech you. In other words, I'm begging you. You notice he didn't say, I'm commanded. But he said, I'm begging. Because serving God is not about a command. Right. Mm. It's about a desire. Yes. Yes. If you don't love me, don't push up yourself upon me. Right. Get close to me. Yes. I'm not gonna beg you to have a relationship with me. Right. You gotta have a desire to want to be with me. So Paul removed commandment. He said, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. If you're going to make the vow, keep the vow. <laughs> the Lord told me you'll be quiet. <laughs> now the devil is a lie anyway. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. And Paul only said it that he had, hey God, that he had edified us. The only reason why he said it is because he edified us before that. Before he said that, we had an understanding that God don't deal with beating you over your head. For Paul edified us in Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. For we talked about justification, uh, sanctification, regeneration, reconciliation, and adoption. He already talked about that. He dealt with us with that. So we know that God did it by his own love. So when he's speaking to us, he doesn't get beside himself like many of us Christians do. He doesn't get over his borders, but he stays within the realm of God. God, and tells us, Hallelujah! I don't want, I don't need to be dictatorial in my presentation, Paul said. But when you realize and appropriate what God has done for you, no hell, no devil can stop your praise. Paul knew that the devil couldn't stop your praise. Hell can't stop your praise. The beat my preacher can't stop your praise. Hallelujah! The lady, the brother, the sister that been beating you down. They can't stop your praise because my praise is a defiant praise. Oh, I'm not telling you people can't deal with this. My praise is a defiant praise. I praise God with great defiance. The devil can't stop my praise. I'm defiant of praising anyhow. Oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to me, oh God. Uh, your look can't stop my praise. Uh, I'm still going to praise. Uh, no matter what you do to me, I'm going to have a different. Uh, that's the praise. Hallelujah. That's the praise that David is talking about. Praise, wait for thee. Oh God, inside. That defiant praise. Hallelujah. I could be tired, I'm still going to praise. I could be weary, I'm still going to praise. I could be broke, but I'm still going to praise. I could be in a tough situation, but I'm still going to praise. I might be down on no luck, but I'm still going to praise. I might be on my face, but I'm still going to praise. I might not see the end to my problem, but I am still going to praise God. Hallelujah. Ah, that's why they don't like me much. Mm. But they see me stand in the midst of foolishness. And I still stand. The Bible told me to stand. I'm going to stand. Say what you want about me. I'm still standing. Ah, do you zoom the zoom with your want? I'm still standing. Defiantly saying, For God I live. And for God. I got a close. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, kind spirit. Thank you, God, praise, wait for thee, O oh God. In Zion. Can I tell you the four things before I close? Oh, help me, kind spirit. Four reasons why I praise God. 
I praise God because when I come before him, I come before him boldly. And when I come before him boldly, he hears my prayer. Even though I'm not right all the time. Ah, one of four things. When I come before him, says the Nicole congregation, I pray and God hears my prayer. I come boldly. Somebody said, why are you going before God? You got so much faults and failures. But I still defiantly, brother, go up before God, sister. I walk up before God, Jakey. And I tell God, ah, ah, the bleeding been bleeding. I've been bleeding. I've been bleeding without ceasing. I've got an issue of blood. I come up before God in a defiant state. Because I'm not supposed to come before God in a bleeding fashion. But I come up anyways. Because I did to serve God. Number one, when I pray, he hears my prayer. He hears it. And that's why. That's one reason why I should praise him. Because he hears every prayer. When you think God's not hearing you, he is hearing your prayer. You have one reason to praise him. Because every time you pray, God hears you. I want to talk to somebody who didn't believe, who don't believe God is hearing them. <clears throat> the devil is a liar. Every time you pray earnestly and humbly before God, I don't care if you're a murderer, I don't care if you're homosexual, I don't care what you are. If you come before God with a broken and a broken spirit and a contrite heart, he cannot but hear you. I'm not advocating wickedness and murder. I'm just simply saying, if you come before God with a brokenness, He is going to hear you. So I want to implore you, keep praying. Not somebody that says, keep praying. Keep praying. Oh God, can I go down to this back? I want to talk to somebody about prayer. Prayer changes things and keep them changed. It doesn't matter what the devil has been trying to do to you. Your prayer will change some things in your life. Are you hearing me, Gage? Your prayer will change some things in your life. It doesn't matter what the devil has been doing in your house. You just gotta continue to pray. He said, but who am I to pray? You were made in the image and likeness of God. God said, if you pray, I will hear you. God said you hear you. All you have to do is pray. Number two, it is wonderful that he hears my prayer. But it's another thing to do something about it. When my prayer goes up, he hears and he pardons my sin. Number two, he pardons my sin. And because he pardons my sin, brother, I praise him. Because everybody else would have hold me, would have held me accountable for my sin. But God said, because you came before me, Ahab, look, Ahab, even Ahab has repented. The minute you repent and come before God, he's able and just to forgive you of your sins. I'm closing right now. Hallelujah to God. Uh, he pardons sins. Uh, Tell somebody he's going to pardon your sins too. Uh, Come on, he's going to pardon your sins. Uh, Come on, he's going to pardon your sins. Uh, don't be selfish with the word of God. I said, Tell somebody. Uh, I tell you, tell somebody. Uh, he's going to pardon your sins. Uh, All you need to do is pray uh, with a broken heart. Uh, he will pardon your sins. Uh, number three, uh, I'm approach you of my sanctification. Uh, tell somebody he'll sanctify me. Uh, Come on, he'll sanctify me. Uh, he'll sanctify you. A praying person that's yeah. forgiven yeah. is sanctified. Yeah. That's number three. He'll sanctify you. That means he'll wash you and he'll set you apart and move you out of the mire of your sin. God, I gotta deliver it, Lord. Yes, Lord, you gave it to me. Let me finish it, Lord. He will sanctify you. You are a wretched sinner, but God heard your prayer. Pardon your iniquity and sanctify you. Wash you, cleanse you, purify you, and call you holy when you know you're not holy, Lord. Uh, number four, and I'm done. Uh, and upon being victorious, uh, because I become, I'm victorious when I come out of my sin. Uh, I'm a victor. Tell somebody I'm a victorious. 
I'm victorious. I'm a victor. I'm a victor. I'm a victor. He places a hedge around me. He places a hedge around me. I've got four things. I've got prayer. I've got pardon. I've got sanctification. And i got a hedge around me. And because God put all these things in place, I've got reasons to praise God. He took a sinner like me, removed the rules and the law, and gave me grace, and gave me four reasons to praise Him. I will praise the Lord
You might be struggling in your situation. You might be cumbersome by your situation. you come. And I want to tell you something profound. Don't let have a revelation will pray for you. Not because you're lesser than, but because you're stuck in your situation. And I'm just blessed that God put me a little higher to see my situation is always in a season. My situation does not define me. But my revelation opposes me. The altar is open. Your situation should not define your revelation. Amen. Up home.